Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the working one. Working shell code. Because I think writing will take me a bit too much time. And now sleep for me. Need to sleep. Right, now it's 2 for 3 a.m. Okay, so I think let's go straight to the working exploit. What I actually did was to copy here. We can actually download like the SC flat assembler. And we can go to flat assembler and we can download. And inside the uh, after downloading, you have a zip file that has this thing maybe at this point. And what we can do is we can look at examples of some of the programs. And what we can do is actually there are two applications one that has this look, and another one that has an icon. This exe file actually has a user interface, while well, this one actually helps to convert any uh, the .asm into an uh, exe file so let's click this you will see the user interface okay, here we can pretty much write any code but for now I will use something that has already been written uh, where did I put it? test shell code okay here we can Oh no. I'm gonna open with this. File open. File. Yes. This is empty file. Yep. Okay, so what this does in a nutshell for the top okay, for those who are not too sure about the format here we can see there's a format of P console type the entry point which is a start and this is actually our I call it, is it label this is our label and here you can see a few labels some labels and labels must start with the top uh, for things that is not in the under entry, which is the dot, dot, and dot. To reference this, we have to say like start dot loop, start dot mean execute found, start dot end, start dot end, start dot end, start dot execute, start dot loop. And that's, that's all. And let's say we can run, we can compile first, there's no error. Passes run and here is our calculator. Okay, let's do this side by side to analyze statically and then later to see dynamically and see at work. Okay, so where's our thing up? Okay, so what we do is uh, we can create a new stack frame, right? And there are some variables that I actually push onto stack, some local variables, and also this pushing of like strings actually contributes to the length of the ESP that I must subtract the amount of ESP that I must subtract okay, so for this find for open Uh, 
(uh) not no this is not fully correct because there's still some errors here and there but I will still try my best to (uh) understand I'll just use it side by side for reference but for this just focus on this (uh) side of the screen ya just focus on this side of the screen (uh) so for this what we need to do is actually I have created a new stack frame we can create a new stack frame I mean and for this part we are actually storing like value to the stack and why this thing looks so weird because we have this now terminator and now terminator we cannot have like now bytes at the very least because this is usually a bad character so you can just rule out saying slash x00 is a bad character so what i did was actually this and in little indian Three, four. In the Indian, let's go to the Yeah, but these things are in the Indian. You don't know. First disorder. Right, and into four so we have to push this part first part first so s s sorry yep one two three four dot and code to hex it's python 2 uh, python 2 and these are values so you can see six three Five seven eight. And here is also six three six five seven eight. Of this now, but I can technically put any value that I want here. But like I put a, like because it's just common. And then we can do a bitwise n, which ff ff ff. So we do bitwise n. Here will be zeros. And so here will be translated to it will be translated to this our and then we push Next, we'll push this, and this is the remaining, so we can do four onwards. And we can see that it is a four, five, six, six, nine, five, seven. We should match this. Here, in the end, we should. Uh, this value so because of this now ESP has this string value the current ESP yep and next we need to uh, okay the reason why we have this uh, we x all edx with edx to make edx to be 0 and then we add 0 to this the reason is because when we just do ebx and straight away just get the fs 0x30 it's going to have a null byte let's try to prove that let's go to online online assembler Try to do this. So we have a move index and we have fs 0x30. 
you know architecture is x six. Yep, you're gonna have now bytes. Here are the now bytes. Now bytes. So instead, if we can use any register, let's say <coughs> ex. Uh, what 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 are you using in this case? Ex ex to make zero plus um ex. And we assemble them. This time there's no now bytes here. No now bytes. Yep. Okay. Never mind. Why not we just do it side by side? Just um, dealt to here. This part, this part till here. Here, this blue color, light blue shading. So first, we create a new stack frame. We gonna run this. Um, let's restart. Okay, we're gonna stack into we're gonna create a new stack frame. Okay, and if you look here, look at the stack area. If we were to stack in, we are, we are creating some random uh spaces, not random but actually like blocks or place for us to store our local variables. For example, our strings. Win execute string. Okay, so this is our string. We're going to have the value ex to be this. And now, if you do an end, you realize that in ex this for one should change to zero. So let's step in. Here becomes a zero. And we're going to push eax, which is this value, onto the stack. So let's take a look at our stack here. We're going to have this values. Uh, this is XEC. The next value will be to push 4, 5, 6 E, and this will be our win E. And so, if you realize, here we end off with a now byte. ESP now contains the S key value for win execute, and this is the string that we want to compare later with. The entries in the name table yeah the name function name table All right so next for this okay, so this is to get rid of our now bytes and remember that fx0 x30 gives us the entry the <coughs> memory address to our PEP So here has our values to PEB. Um, right, and our offset. So the offset here is 0, 3, 0, and see our offset at 0xc, which is our LDR, which later will point to our in memory order modules. So here we have offset 0xc from our PEB. This value that points to PEB, we get offset of 0xc. We are going to now 
point LDR fuel. Type PV LDR. Now EV having this memory address, we're going to first add 0x14, 0x14 here, we get our in-memory order module list. So now here we get our order module list from our PV LDR data. And so now if we access this very uh this very entry, we access the content uh, access what do you call it? If we access the memory to get the value, we're actually getting a pointer to our next node which points to our NT, uh, NT, NT, NT DIL DIL. Yep, we should point here. So, our point Module R module pointer to LL of UL. And so now, now that it has the value of this, where we access this value, if we access this value, we are going to find kernel 32. So this is actually what this line is doing. Point to LDR module responsible for kernel 32. Yeah. Okay, and also if you realize, uh, remember that here when we plus hex 10, we actually get our base value of kernel 32. Yeah. So this what it's doing. The current memory here plus hex 10 access whatever that's inside which is our base address and store into EBX. So now EBX contains of kernel dot URL. Then after that what we're gonna do is just store this to just in case we might not need it actually I have not optimized the shell code but we might we can just store it in the stack anyways so up to you here that's what we're gonna analyze in the uh the immunity debugger So again, this one is to uh, remove the null bytes and then point to LDR offset, point to memory module, point to the module responsible for NTDIL, the DIL, and then kernel 32, and then store the base address in the EBX. Now here, we are currently at this line. We will first clear EDX. And somehow okay, here EDX will have the value 0 plus 30, so effectively just FS30. And EBX when I step in should now get the the point the virtual relative address relative virtual address of PEB. So let's step in. Let's step in. 
yep which is now this value should have the relative address of the or is it the offset uh, we have the address of the pb and now e x plus c we are going to point to the ldr field so let's step in ebx now has ntdir dot something so we are actually somewhere in there i'm not so sure how to confirm that but anyway if we do ebx plus 14 we should get an in-memory order it's supposed to contain again like the, the memory address for the pbrdr data so let's step in uh, this now points to that. Uh, okay, so now this point to, um, for the memory or the other modules, and we go next. Yeah, we have been pointing module to. NTDIL just now, the previous line, and then the kernel 32 right now when I step in again. So now this address 00514518 is now pointing to the LDR module for the kernel 32.til. So now if we step in, like in the previous video, you should see here to contain the value kernel 32. Dot something something. And this should be its base address. Stepping in. Here you go. So what I'm gonna do is just to store this onto the local uh, the stack. And yeah, I'm store on the stack. And we should see here like step in uh step in. Yep, we're storing the stack. Actually we I do not know why I missed some number like minus 4. We can actually use minus 4, you know, we are wasting space. Uh, but well, yeah, we can use minus 4. There's no reason to use minus 8. Straight. Then they gave a uh, stack stupid so we can do anything we want. So right now, EBX contains the base address to kernel 32. Oh, the yeah, base address. Next, oh. next is uh, base address plus 0x3c. Uh, now, right now, we are searching for the win, uh, the win execution function, win execute function. So remember that uh, this is the base address, and we need to add offset 0x3c. To get a PE signature, and PE signature, remember that we actually should yes. PE signature. Yeah. yeah, we are supposed to get value E eight. No. Yeah, we are supposed to get value E eight, and then when we Mm. Let's just refer back the notes. Oh yeah, okay, so 3C points to our actually tells us the offset for our PE signature, which is E8. Yep, I was right. So 3 C our offset like our offset is here focus on this line offset is 3c and it actually points to file address of next exe header which has this value which will then data point us to it like here 
and note that it is again PE for our signature here. It's actually our fuel. Uh. Everything here is the fuel. So later uh, in the divider, we should also see a P like string. A P string. To actually comment this offset or to just see the RGB. Get the base, get the <clears throat> oh, find the address. That's the address. That's the address. Okay, so now with the offset, somehow I decided to store this on the local variable on the stack. So anyway, I store <coughs> address of nature stack. Uh, yeah, stack. That's local variable. Okay. Then remember that the our offset of p signature offset. By is U X seven eight should give us the R V A of our export table. So this actually get us the export table relative project address. And it is actually a pattern. After that, we will add our this uh virtual relative virtual address with our base address. Remember, this is our base address, base address, base address. Um, yeah, one, two, three, four. So. All the adding with EBX is actually us trying to get the actual um, address for this one. Yeah. Address of exportable. And after that, store the local variable again. Store, store address. As local bar. and the pattern continues actually so our ECX which is actually the export table address if we add plus 0 x14 we get the total number of functions total number of functions so Total number of functions, and we're going to store this value into ETX. Total number of functions. Into a local variable. So ETX again, we store the local variable. For this 0x1c, we get the address of function. And then we get the actual address. This is the v R R V A actual address stored into variable. Uh, this one is the address of names. Store uh add, get the R V A actual address stored in the variable. This one is the address of name ordinals. R V A. Get the actual address stored into local variable. Yep, so let's continue on with the comments. Okay. RG Oh, 
address function recover Okay, get diary of what I can see of get address of address of links reception. Okay, a uh, store booker bar. Let's get our view of the calculate press of red or dinner. Lastly, store oh. another local vehicle. And everything comes stack. Okay, so for this, now we are going to visualize that in our immunity debugger. So currently, we are at um, nine. Right, this time. So EBX, it should give us the RVA for P signature. Okay, so from let's see, it should get E8, right? So let me draw. EBX plus TC. Here, we should get E8. So let's confirm this. Here, EAX, when I step in, I should get E8. And EX is here, when I step in, we E8. E8. And the very next thing that we do need to do, remember that we actually have our kernel 32 in EBX here. I can't highlight this, but it's here. Can I highlight? Appearance. No. Okay, so anyway, EBX. Right, EBX. This is where our base address is, and we're going to add it to EX. And this is our. <coughs> yep. So. Uh, this is our base address and we are going to add e, e, it here so let's step in f7 we actually get our s key of pe and this is actually the address of pe signature which makes sense now because e8 does contain pe so for the next line we're going to store this into a local variable you should be able to uh, see it here on the stack so let's step in and this is where our p address is p signature address is set and the next line plus seven eight we're going to get the vra rva of the export table so let's step in and you restart the ECX. So ECX should contain 91030, which again makes sense if you compare back here. Plus 8, we get 160, and 160 here we get our value 091030. That's how do I? 
the any way to add edit. Yep. Yes. This is our base address 91030. Or just from here, 91030. Yep. And we're gonna. That's the VRVA. Now we're gonna get the, the address. We're gonna step in to get the address. CX. Address. Oops. Oh, wrong. Here. So a base address plus and next we're gonna store it onto a local variable again you'll be around it you can step in. This is where we're gonna store our we're gonna store the export table. This is where our export table is located at. Next, we are going to find the total number of function which can be found on the export table, which is the offset of x plus 8, 14. So, uh, if we start EDX, so EDX, if we step in, 63V. This is again the total number of functions that are being exported. And here, total number 63V. Again, it tells. Then after that, we're going to find the actual address again. We're going to step in. Oh, actually not the actual address. Um, what we're doing is store this on the local uh, stack, local variable here. So this is just a number. Yep. Next, we're going to get the address of functions, which is 0x1c, address of functions. And we'll be stored in EDI. So EDI here now contains the value 91058, which can be found here. 91058. Address of function. Next, this does the RVA. We're going to get the actual address here and store it to the local uh, variable on the stack. And the next one is the address of names, where all the strings of names are being found, reference to the VRVA of the strings. So here, we start ESI, take a look at ESI, then 92944, checking back, 92944, address of names. And as usual, we're going to get the actual address and store it onto the stack here well actually it's here because I'm supposed to put 1c but I somehow put 2 0 so it's gonna be here actually we are supposed to put 1c maybe to review space I don't know but again I can do anything I want see I'm the one crafting it okay next plus 2 4 no, no, let's take a look at Gitra. Plus two four is actually nine four two three zero, and that is the RVA of the address of name ordinals. So let's step in. Nine four two three zero as seen here. Get the <coughs> get the actual address and start on the stack here. Yep, and that's where we dealt so far. According to the notes, right now we have yep, we have completed all this, and so now we have to look through the name pointer table and compare each string between execute. And still keep the count of the position because count of the position affects the ordinal values, which affects the ability to locate the function. So, 
let's go ahead and look at the this. So what we did, what this does is to push. Remember, this is our this is our string. So ESP. Let's take a look at immunity debugger. ESP has been executed. If we right click and we follow in stack, we see that here is indeed our information. So what I've done is to put hard code string in ESI and EBP minus 0x20 is actually the address of names which is actually again where we want to compare the name from yep and how we actually do this is well, with this um, instruction, CLD, it actually clears the, the uh, direction flag. Okay, and then let's go to it clears direction. <laughs> clears direction flag, causing string to instruction to increment the SI and DI index registers. So what you should do is the instruction command and this is where the conventional come in where ESI is actually the source of the stream and EDI is the kind of the definition. So ETSX is the counter so we have to uh, initialize this to zero at first and just clear, clear the direction flag which will increment EDI and ESI. So EDI now is remember it's a pointer to a string. ESI is also a pointer to a string. That's the um, pain. String is also um, like taken as an array. Some points at the first. What we need to do is actually compare byte by byte, one byte by byte, one byte. So execute, and this is maybe one la anything. I this is just random. I do not know what is this. So what we need to do is actually to compare this, with this and. What this does, EDI, which is this string here, so then, okay, we are. This is, let's compare back to the notes. So it get a bit confusing. Alright, okay. EDI is actually the address to the name table. Okay, so if we look at Ghidra, nine two nine four four. Two nine four four here, and these are the strings, right? So remember, like if you want to go to the next entry, we are always incrementing by four bytes. So if counter is zero, actually we'll be referring to this. If counter is one, one times four plus the base address. Um, two times four plus the base address. Three times four, four times four times. That's why we have the four. EDX and EDX is actually our so-called um, counter. This is actually 
finding the offset um, like which which uh, which the number of lines before reaching the win execute because uh, that one will correspond to the ordinals table so EDI no, um, EDI which is the base address here is equal to 4 times the counter 4 times the counter and this counter will be incremented later so you can care about it later so again you can see base address plus uh, base address plus 4 times 0 we get this and then later we're going to compare with the win execute function so first we are putting this um, address the um, pointer to this string into EDI and then at EDI PDX to get the actual um, to get to add the base address after that in the accumulator we're going to add it we can't move it because again move it gives a null byte at least one null byte but if we add CX view time 8 is fine and this allows us to compare 8 times uh, 8 8 times yep byte by byte here so this is REPE compare sign byte REP by itself means repeat but if you have the E at the back it means um check on remote it means yeah, let's see what it writes okay okay so just talking about matching find non-matching bytes so if this byte and this byte matches they will continue if this does not match it's going to terminate And the zero flag is going to give um, gonna give it's according to this type. REP here find non matching double yes and here is because we didn't we did we add the B so actually we'll be looking here. Find non matching bytes. And the terminating is when these two matches. So if match is zero, if it does not match means it's one. Uh not zero, I mean non zero. Okay, so I forgot to comment on this good for matching bytes. have the whole result as a zero as the whole thing is matched with zero then we're gonna have win execute found if it's not found we're gonna increment our counter yeah our counter later will be used so since previously zero is gonna be one four times one is four and base address base is BRE is here plus 4 we're gonna go to the next entry and now we're gonna look for the next uh, string then it's gonna compare 8 times and again find if it's matching if it's not matching increment the counter and continue the top but after uh, increasing counter what we need to do 
yeah, total number of functions. Yeah, we're going to compare if we have already exceeded a total number of functions. If we exceed that means we can we have to stop. Uh. I mean there's no more entry to compare. So if we compare EX, which is total number with EDX, if the number is bigger than zero, go back to loop. This is why we have to come back. This is how we look back. Yep. So later once we find the let's go through this. And once we found it, after all the bytes have been matched and we get a zero flag as zero, we're gonna find as win execute found. Shall continue? Should I continue? Okay. Maybe let's say we okay we won't be looking at this for now for now we check that uh imagine the whole thing does not matching all entries have been compared and none of them are matching we are going to um jump to start end and basically end is just to clear back the stack frame and just return Remember when it matches, we have to find the ordinal address, the the value, and also get a table address. The this table address zero x one eight. Yeah, it's actually talking a function address. See, we need ordinal table value and the address of the function table. So this is where we're going to get from our local variable that we store the values and store it to ESI and EDI. Let's go back to the notes. Once we can find the win execute function, then we have to find the RBA for that function. And so again, the formula remember the function address table plus ordinal number times four. Zero x two four is the ordinal table. Yes. RBA. Function address again RBA. You know, function address of table is not RBA anymore. We already calculated them. Yep. So for ordinal table, remember that our counter actually keeps tracks of the of how many rows before the win execute hits. So you say again just to recap, if we hit here, it's gonna be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yep, this is the sixth row. So our ordinal value, we need to go to the ordinal table and count the six and get the value from there. So Ordinal here, nine four two three zero. And image is uh, six row zero one two three four five six. Our ordinal value should be nine. And remember that here is a uh, two byte by two bytes for each ordinal value. That's why. Um, here, ESI continue ordinal value. This is the six row. We need to times two because total here has twelve bytes. Six row. 
for example, actually 7 because 0 to 6 is 7 times 2 is 14 bytes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this is why the formula is this way. And we're going to store it into AX. If we access at this like um, location, we're going to get this value. This value gets stored into AX, our ordinal value. That's how we get our ordinal value. And see that if we want to calculate the function RPA of the address table, it's the ordinal value that we store in AX times 4 because address. Uh, address value for this is stored with 4 bytes so same logic as why this is 2 this is 4 because it's stored in 4 bytes times the ordinal value plus EDI and this EDI is actually our function address table now we are looking for the RAA of the of these uh, values calculated by the ordinal value And next, we will get the actual value because EVX, remember, is our base address. So, base address plus the RVA of the function table, we get the true um, address of win execute. Okay, so, now let's take a look at immunity debugger. Going to be looping, so I'm just going to show for the first few entries, and then just going to break point later. So first we have EDX. This is our counter. EDX our counter. F7. This is going to change EDX to be zero. Let me drink. EDX being our counter, we're gonna. Let me do and we're gonna move ESP which is our string here win execute into ESI and we're gonna move our local variable which is our uh, the string table the name table name pointer table into EDI here Okay, then after that, we're going to set ECX to be 0. And it's going to clear the direction flag. After that, we're going to... What's this? I, oh, I didn't record. Uh, the, okay, this is the... It's talking about the, the very first entry of our string table. Let's draw. address uh, 92944 92944 plus the counter times 4 so plus counter with 0 times 4 this is our first entry of this string so if you were to move that into EDI, you should see a acquire SRW log exclusive. So let's step into now. Oh, okay. I've got this. It's actually the RVA. We need to add the base address of EBX, which is EBX. So we need to add EDI with EBX. So now this value should give you this acquire SRW log exclusive now on EDI here. Okay, so acquire SRW like exclusive. Now we need to add the counter to it and check if we are not. 
and after comparing the very first um after comparing the very first character they realized that oh it's exactly not matching so zero flag will actually not be set. So now we need to increment our counter ETX and we need to move um, minus 14 minus 14 let's go back and see what they do oh right remember we need to count we, we need to keep track that we are not exceeding unnecessarily the total number of functions so this is actually talking about the total number of functions and I put it in the EAX and we compare it with the current counter if current counter is more than the total number of functions then we can just exit and since it is above we are going to back to loop and again we can make it clear EDX now is 1 right so 1 times 4 is 4 plus the name pointer address so right now we are going to have acquire SW log share yeah, I should now have the Let me set a breakpoint and just press 7. Okay, I forgot again. This is just RDA. Now, the next F7, I should get the acquired SRW log share. Yeah. So, I'm going to do a breakpoint here. I'm going to press F7. Are you going to see activate? X CTX next of F9 and then activate X CTX worker and atom A and atom W at console alias A at console alias W their directory and integrity label blah 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 and you can see if we keep running till the breakpoint, we are actually traversing down the name pointer table. Okay, let's actually run all the way to win execute. It's gonna take some time. Just fast forward if you want. That's going to take really some time. The thing is, I do not know how to set any conditional breakpoints. I think it will be faster. <laughs> ah, that's part me. Now let the OP R S for the step function. Virtual free virtual lock, virtual protect. Oh. Hey, do. Why 
Why am I hearing this song? Oh! Something that indicates us. What is that? Once we see the main exact we are going to step through. Meanwhile, we just realize how the Z flag is being set to one. So F seven, uh, F nine. White character. Wow. Oh. Now it's win execute. We're gonna step through. We're gonna add it. And we're gonna check character by character. W I correct. I N E X E T and go next. We're gonna see that. Actually, this is not the city flag. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is not. This is not the city flag. It's like first non. Now that we see that it's actually go to zero, we can actually see here jump is taken. F seven. Here we're gonna jump to. Oh, here actually a small four. Four two three zero. Okay, now that the win execute has been found and all the bytes are matching, now we're gonna put an ordinal table which is located here into ESI. So if we were to step in. ESI now contains this value and then we're going to put the minus 18 which is our function address table. This is where our function address will be found at the RVA. So let's put it at EDI. And next we're going to find the EDX remember was our counter. We're going to times 2 because ordinal values are kept in 2 bytes. And adding the ESI which is our ordinal value table address. So we can find the value because we are actually Dereferencing it. So if when we step in, we should be able to see ax, and we should be able to tell what the value of the what the value of the um ordinal value should be. So let's step into five f eight, and if you refer back to our previous video, five f eight was the value that we calculated, like when we reverse back. It's because uh, um, yeah. Next, using this ordinal value, remember we have to multiply by 4, that's part of the way it works, and then we add the value of the function table address, the, the virtual, uh, the relative virtual address. So if we step in, ex. Now ex should have some or oh, not not no value yet, but we need to add to our actual base address. So ex should now contain kernel thirty two win execute. Now we know that we are actually pointing to the win execute function. This is the actual address. Okay, for the next next few lines, what we are doing is actually pushing the C Windows uh, system32 calculator.exe in little Indian form and again we XOR E8 EDX and EX to put as zero so that that could add our 
we have to work as our now term lead. So let's step in. You should see that it is now shift to zero. I'm going to push this. This should act as our now terminator. Next, we're going to push the dot ec all in reverse. So now you can see c uh, colon backslash windows system32 calculator exe. Then we're going to move this uh, value into EDI. So EDI now has the has the um, string pointer pointing to the calculator.ec string. We're going to push the 10 or 0a for default uh, show default. And then we're going to push the pointer to the string. And we're going to call our we execute function. So if we call ex by stepping, we have a calculator. And after all that is done, we can continue to clear our stack frame and we can just return. And that's it. This is how our show code is working for this. Okay, again, now is the big picture. <coughs> Seven. So, so our base of the kernel 32 onto the into a local variable yep get our p signature what is this now we're getting the variable yeah but if we slowly trace we should be able to get ready so anyway, that's just run the whole thing. Unset this breakpoint and just set it there. Okay. F9. F2. Push. All this. Where, what uh, application that I want and for this calculator yeah, it's how the charcoal work yep, so I hope this can somehow help you all to understand how Windows shell coding could be done in a 32-bit system uh, 32-bit Intel architecture x68 x86 but yes yep so hope we help somehow somehow okay, uh.